I as mentioned in my last video, a proposed solution is to put a shorter, stiffer stylus on my probe, um, say a 3mm tungsten carbide stem with a 4mm ball, something like the proportions of the Heimer, uh, which is also a relatively stiff mechanical actuation. Um, but um, as mentioned by the guys on the or, or, um, turbo step on the zone, um, how do I know the problem is specifically that of the stem flex and not the uh, little hub inside, the plastic hub inside, or even I was thinking the uh, swing arms or balls displacement could be causing some of the problems. So I thought before I go and construct those special uh, stylus, I'd do a little test um, suggested by Turbo Step. So I've got the dial indicator in contact with the sphere here, and I'll put the scales on. I've also had um, correspondence with Ronshaw, and they sent me an email to say that their probe triggers at a level of 20 grams. So let's put 20 grams on, which is a tiny amount, which is about there. Well, it's 24 grams, and it's moved less than a hundredth of a millimetre. So you can see that that wouldn't be a problem, that amount of flex. It's about half a hundredth of a millimetre at 20 grams. But okay, let's go the whole way now. We know that um, we're getting electrical trip at about 0.1. So let's go to 0.1. And we're getting 175 grams. So, so some of the flex is in the hub and so on. So let's go back now to a level of... Uh, 148, I think from memory we were getting 148 grams, which is, well it's just, just tripping over it, 148, I don't know if you can see that on the screen or not, 149 grams, that's eight and a half hundredths, so, um, so by simple proportion about 85% of the problem is in the stem which is proportioned, it's about 20, 30 millimeters overall, 28 millimeters to the start of the ball, something like that. So you can see that it's proportioned fine for a 20 gram trip, but it's not proportioned right for a 148 gram trip, um, which is just too much movement. And that wouldn't be so bad if it was consistent between the X and the Y, but because we're getting this variation that we found in the last te test of 109 in one direction, 148 in another direction, and so on, it's the, it's the variation that's the problem, not the amount of flex, because the amount of flex can be um, taken care of via entering a diameter in the tool table of the effective diameter, you know, which might be... Um, say 3 thou radius, say 6, six thou effective diameter smaller, but it's the variation. So if I make a stiffer uh, stylus that is shorter and, and I'm only getting a small amount of flex, say reducing the flex from between 2 and 4 thou between x and y, if I could reduce it between half and 1 thou between x and y, I'm still going to get the variation, but the amount of the variation will be a lot less. And so that's within the range of accuracy of, of most uh, jobs that I do anyway, um, and be a really useful tool. One thing I didn't mention was how is the stylus now mounted. Um, I've just mounted it, cut a thread in the end of a, um, a, a piece of steel, uh, 3.8 steel, and screwed it into the end, which is held in a um, ER32 collet chuck. So you can see it's very rigidly held now, and there'd be very little flex occurring um, above the top of the stem. Just while I've got this set up here, I keep forgetting to check what is the. Hold that camera still. What is the uh, load of a dial indicator? Okay, so I'm moving the dial indicator in and out of contact. Now we're on zero, put a bit of a movement on it, 
and we're getting about 17 grams obviously varies according to the amount 17 grams 20 grams so that's the sort of uh, pressure taken to operate this dial indicator which is a good quality Swiss dial indicator a, a guy rod test uh, this was made 01 graduations so that that can be uh, taken into account if, if accurate calculations need to be done